I say, good God, I think it's so fun. It is so fun. I'm not the point. I agree with you. What? And what? I think that's the point. I can't do that. 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 Man, great colony party. These colonies look so cool. I want these right here. Oh, little America. Don't you know those are Spain's colonies? You can't just take them. Yeah, I'm going to ignore that. Watch me. So, 1898. Cuba has been in open revolt against Spain for the last four years, and the United States is getting a little concerned for the security of its interests in the region. In response, the USS Maine is sent to Havana Harbor as a show of force. However, upon getting to Havana, the Maine had a little bit of an... issue. Did the ship sink? <laughs> no, better than sinking, it exploded and then sank. Although nobody really knows why the man exploded, it still doesn't change the fact that the Spanish were a rather easy target to blame for the mangled wreck of a warship sitting in Havana's harbor. Especially due to the rising tensions between the United States and Spain over the few years leading up to the incident. Although greatly angered by the destruction of the Maine, many in the United States government, including President McKinley, saw the situation as an opportunity to create a new American colonial empire in Cuba, as well as the Philippines, who had also been in open revolt for the last two years. So, as a response, on April 25th, 1898, the United States officially declared war on Spain. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, you guys kinda suck. I really can't believe you just said that to me. Alright, fellers! Who's ready to be liberated? Taking swift action, the United States would dispatch two forces against Spain, one heading for the Philippines and the other for Cuba. The first signs of combat would occur in Manila Bay, only five days after the declaration of war, when the American Navy bombarded the Spanish so heavily that the Americans kind of just got to sit in the bay for around four months. I guess you could say that the Spanish forces were blown away. You may fire when ready, man. Back in Cuba, the American naval force would enter Guantanamo Bay and begin landing troops while facing very little initial Spanish resistance. After establishing camps along the bay, the Americans would be reinforced by Cuban guerrillas, and together, they would repulse several Spanish counterattacks. But it wasn't until the Battle of Cusco Well that the Spanish would retreat and the Americans would be able to fully establish control over the bay. Meanwhile, in the Pacific! Oh man, it's so nice to receive a peaceful visit from you guys. We never get visitors out here. Yeah, about that. Get out of here. This is our island now. Whoa, man, calm down. It's not like we're at war or anything. Man, you guys really don't get a lot of visitors out here, do you? And now, back to Cuba! American forces would advance inland from Guantanamo Bay towards the city of Santiago de Cuba when they met Spanish forces at San Juan Hill for possibly the most famous battle of the war. Combat would begin with American forces attacking Spanish positions on San Juan Hill and eventually taking the positions after hours of brutal combat. Simultaneously, American cavalry units would attack and capture Kettle Hill. It was during this fighting that the Rough Riders, led by future President Theodore Roosevelt, would gain notoriety for being instrumental in the assault on Kettle Hill, as well as their overall swagger while doing it. Anyway, now that the American forces held both San Juan and Kettle Hills, they were in a prime position to capture Santiago de Cuba, which is exactly what happened a few days later, ending major combat operations in Cuba. But this wouldn't be the end of fighting in the Caribbean as the United States began their invasion of the Spanish-controlled island of Puerto Rico. American forces landed at the town of Guanica and quickly defeated Spanish and Puerto Rican forces on numerous occasions. This would allow the United States to easily occupy the entire southern half of the island, which ended hostilities in the Caribbean. This decisive victory in Puerto Rico would see Manila become the final Spanish stronghold left, and the defenders would be faced with two options. Option 1 saw the Spanish surrender the city to the local Filipino resistance force with the likely outcome that every Spaniard in the city would be killed, 
In option two would see the Spanish and American forces host a mock battle and ultimately hand over control of the city to the United States. So with almost all Spanish soldiers thinking, Quiero vivir mucho, they went with option two. So on August 13th, 1898, American and Spanish forces fought in the Battle of Manila, or commonly referred to as the Mock Battle of Manila, due to both forces participating in the battle just to screw over the Filipinos. And with the end of the Mock Battle and capture of Manila, all combat operations would end, ceasing active hostilities between the United States and Spain. A couple months later, the Treaty of Paris, 1898 edition, was signed between both parties in order to formally end the war. The treaty would cede Puerto Rico, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, and the Philippines to the United States. After gaining much of their occupied territory, the United States would strangely allow Cuba to become quasi-independent, but still heavily under American influence. A situation which would persist until a certain communist overthrew the Cuban government in 1959. However, the United States would continue to hold control over Guantanamo Bay, which continues until today, which, um, has led to some issues. However, the biggest impact of the treaty, and in turn, the war, was the formal end of the long-lived Spanish Empire and the beginning of America's short-lived colonial empire. These imperial ambitions were not so popular among the citizens of the Philippines, who later rebelled against American forces the next year, in the not-so-quick sequel to the Spanish-American War, the Philippine-American War, which did not end until 1913. Although being the first time since probably the Mexican-American War that both northern and southern states were truly united, the war would quickly become very controversial. Today, the war is seen as an unjustified conflict orchestrated by the United States that gain itself some colonies and in turn become a global power. Which I mean... It's a bit of an oversimplification, but not too far from the truth. But this isn't a new idea by any means, as many veterans of the war went on to regret their part in it, such as Iowa Governor Dan Turner, who reportedly stated that They gave us the Springfield rifle. Wish I'd never learned to shoot it. They said we were fighting for liberty, but it was cruel. It was cruel. Well, that's a bit of a downer to end on. Let's talk about something more positive. So how did the war affect Spain? That's right, it led to massive political destabilization, which would play a role in the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War. Man, I really need to buy a dictionary. 